this poster entitled Outcomes in Patients with Idiopathic Pulmonary Fibrosis and Pulmonary Hypertension was a single center retrospective study presented by Collins and colleagues. They presented 71 patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis that also had right heart catheterization data. Of those, 13 did not have pulmonary hypertension at all, and the rest were split between precapillary, postcapillary, and mixed pulmonary hypertension. There really was no difference between these groups as, as far as lung function goes, as measured by forced vital capacity or FEV1. The diffusion capacity was not presented in this poster, and there was no difference between these groups in their transplant-free survival. This was possibly related to the fact that this was a small cohort, as we do know that pulmonary hypertension increases the risk of mortality in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis from other cohorts. This study did show that there was a mix of patients with precapillary, postcapillary, and mixed pulmonary hypertension, and this could have implications as far as management goes. We can't assume that all patients with pulmonary hypertension and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis are really the same. This is a retrospective review uh, on outcomes in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, and pulmonary hypertension done by uh, Ashley Collins and colleagues. Um, this was a fairly well done retrospective review of uh, 750 patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, they uh, reviewed this and uh, found patients who had um, validated right heart catheterizations um, and uh, look for outcomes of transplant-free survival as the primary um, uh, uh, measure uh, uh, comparing patients with pulmonary hypertension and IPF and those without. Uh, they looked at five main groups, um, including um, those with precapillary pulmonary hypertension, uh, postcapillary hypertension, uncategorized pulmonary hypertension, mixed uh, pulmonary hypertension, and those with right heart catheterizations with no evidence of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, there were um, uh, 29 patients with precapillary pulmonary hypertension and, and then a, a combination of others that made up the 71 patients um, with data. And basically they found that in aggregate, there was no difference in uh, transplant-free survival among these different groups of uh, subsets of pulmonary hypertension and uh, patients with idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, but that in total, um, patients with uh, pulmonary hypertension compared to those without have um, uh, worse outcomes and uh, less uh, transplant-free survival time compared to people with uh, IPF who don't have uh, pH. Uh, and the key takeaways from this are that uh, more work is needed uh, to characterize uh, patients with uh, types of pulmonary hypertension with IPF and better understand um, prevalence of these um, subsets of disease and uh, to understand uh, uh, impacts it has um, as a disease process uh, in patients with IPF on um, prevention uh, and uh, comorbidities and uh, survival time. So I think that it was um, a very large um, body of patients that were evaluated uh, and uh, characterizes pulmonary hypertension and its relationship to survival in this patient population. So some of the clinical implications and practical application of this uh, poster would indicate that um, practicing clinicians um, should refer patients with pulmonary hypertension and worsening oxygen status for early right heart catheterization. Uh, they should be aware that the presence of pulmonary hypertension adds significant morbidity and mortality to patients with IPF and that um, uh, de defining the process that is underlying their pulmonary hypertension may have su substantial clinical relevance uh, as further uh, research becomes available.